Hey friends, welcome back to your second edition of uh, Kitchen Hot News while I'm here on my workcation here in sunny Cape Town. I appreciate everybody taking the time out of their day to watch this little here video. So we don't have a sponsor for today's video. However, uh, there is somebody who's near and dear to my heart who I would really appreciate if you guys would go subscribe to their channel. Um, it's actually one of the biggest YouTubers that influenced me on our journey to you know where we are today and it's Olin Rogers, he is a, a sketch comedian, just a, a hilarious dude who has probably influenced my version of what I find funny in so many ways. And he is so freaking close to a million subscribers, just something like 2.5 thousand away. He uh, runs the store that basically sells all the shirts that I wear. He's the guy behind Final Space. Uh, so if you guys are at all interested in checking him out, it would mean a lot if for some reason we could be one of the pushes that actually puts him over a million. So it would mean a lot to me personally if we could uh, get Olin to a million. So if you guys are at all interested, I'll leave a link in the video description for you guys to sub to him. He has hilarious, Story times, it makes me happy. Anyways, speaking of things that make me happy, graphics cards and Intel. Intel doesn't really make me happy all the time. Anyways, there was a whole bunch of announcements that came out of GDC where they talked about their new gra gaming graphics card setups, including a new command center for their graphics applications, as opposed to, you know, that little graphics property one that you see on your Intel integrated graphics crap that's there all the time. It's got a new fancy little hub for, uh, for gaming stuff. Not only that, they kind of revealed some renders for their prototype upcoming Project Z graphics cards. However, I wouldn't necessarily think that uh, these are going to be the final additions, especially since this actually just looks, looks like a shorter version of a graphics card that we've seen previously by another renderer. It looks like this is fan made. Actually, they specified that it was fan made. So don't expect that this is what the final graphics card is going to look like, but Okay, so there's actually two different versions. There's the one that looks like the previous render, and then there's another one that basically looks like an AMD graphics card. That, that's what I expect an RX 560 to look like. Yeah, Intel, don't, don't copy AMD, please. Don't do it. But there has been some more information regarding the Gen 11 graphics that are coming out from Intel. Gen 11 is obviously the predecessor to the Project Z lineup, which is going to be Gen 12. We're expecting to get about one teraflop of performance in the integrated chip, which should be on their Ice Lake setup. That is basically equivalent to roughly an Xbox One, the original Xbox One, not the One S or the One X. So there's a lot of horsepower that's being packed into these things and it's been revealed that they actually have a new memory setup that allows them to have it in a four by 32 bit interface as opposed to a two by 64 bit interface, which allows for simultaneous access on different things, reading and writing at the same time. So there are some improvements that are going to be coming along. The new generation of graphics, that's not just a GPU horsepower, but actual some architecture redesign, which is gonna be kind of cool. But you know what else is kind of cool? I don't know how to say this. Anyways, Intel's been stealing people everywhere all the time. Not only did they get Raj Kadori, they got Chris Hook. They've been picking up people left and right. They picked up Ryan Shrout from PC Perspective, as well as Alvin Mon Malventano. Alvin Malventano, gosh dang, my mouth is hard to say that name. Anyways, they just picked up another person in the hardware review journalist space, and that's Kyle Bennett from Hard OCP. Now, basically, uh, they just need to pick up Steve from Gamers Nexus and the super completeness of Intel's land grab on making sure that they don't pay. <gasps> this is genius. So instead of actually forcing reviewers to say good things, they just buy all of the reviewers. This is genius. Good job, Intel, you've played us really well. But you know who else played us really well? NVIDIA, with the prices of their graphics cards. But apparently, that doesn't matter to hardly heck a lot of you because NVIDIA is saying that Turing is having a 45% higher adoption rate than Pascal when it first launched. So you guys are spending more money on graphics cards than you should be, and that's ridiculous. They also said that 90% of users are buying in the upward pricing graphics product tier, which makes sense because, I mean, the 16 16, 16, 60 Ti just launched. So the only option that we've had was to buy the 2016 up with the $350 price tag. So yeah, of course, 90%, you, you release this right after you launch the lower end cards. This is a bunch of crap, NVIDIA. 
Anyways, the fact that people are buying it in higher capacity than with Pascal makes me saddened by all of you. Apparently, it only represents 2% of the total amount of NVIDIA cards that are currently on the market. Around 50% are currently on Pascal, 2% on Turing, and then 48% are on Maxwell or Previous. So good job to you people holding out, but gosh, dang it, NVIDIA. Why you have to do us like this? Anyways, you know what else they're doing? They're releasing a new creator-ready graphics driver that's a bit more uh, focused on people such as ourselves who use our graphics cards, not necessarily for gaming most of the time, but rather for content creation in Adobe Premiere or After Effects. And things like Cinema 4D as well as Blender are gonna be part of the Creator Ready Driver. So if you're a content creator who's on NVIDIA, you might wanna check these out and see if it gives you any uplift in performance, as opposed to things like you know the Radeon 7, which Wendell from Level 1 Techs as well as Epos Fox have been showing is a much better Premiere graphics card, much smaller smoother, especially when you enable high bandwidth cache controller and you have no issues whatsoever. Whereas on video, you have tons of issues. So maybe just pick up a Radeon 7. I don't have my Radeon 7 to show off here. It's back at the office. I'm on, I'm on holiday, gosh dang it. Speaking of being on holiday, you know who's been on holiday? This, does, this is a bad segue. Anyways, ray tracing and deep learning super sampling has finally come to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, whichever one the latest one is. So. How many months after launch this thing came out in freaking September? We're in March, six months after this game came out. It's finally getting ray tracing and deep learning super sampling. It was one of the touted titles when it first came out, being like, check out all these shadows. Yeah, that's what the ray tracing implementation of Shadow of the Tomb Raider is. Freaking shadows, aptly named. Good job, Square Enix. Proud of you. If anybody cares about this game still, there you go. Your RTX card's gonna salivate over it. Let's talk about some AMD stuff. MSI has rolled out some BIOS updates to support upcoming Ryzen processors for the Zen 2 stuff. So that's exciting. We reported previously about uh, some BIOS updates that were coming out to other motherboard manufacturers that indicated that there could be a renaming in the AMD family calling Zen 2 Valhalla instead of Ryzen, but we there's no more information out on that. But BIOS updates are being rolled out, which means we could be a couple months away from tasting that sweet Zen 2 glory. 3850X, I'm coming for you. Then let's talk about more AMD stuff, the Google Stadia. Uh, that's the new cloud gaming service thing. I have a whole bunch of thoughts on this. I don't know, let me know. Do you guys want me to do an entirely dedicated video talking about the pros and cons and just kind of what I think on Google Stadia because I have a whole bunch of thoughts. Anyways, there's a controller, it connects to the internet. The internet gives you video games. You play the video games over the internet. It's a fun time, but AMD custom made a graphics card for them. They're saying it's a custom Vega solution. Uh, considering it's not rolled out yet, I'm gonna say that maybe it's Navi. Maybe. And they're just not disclosing that yet. I don't know. That's just pure speculation. I could be, I could just be hyping myself up. Anyways, the GPU has 10.7 teraflops of performance, 56 compute units, and HBM2. No, HBM2 memory makes it Vega. Oh gosh dang. Gosh dang. Ah! Ah! Why HBM2? Why is this out to be so expensive? This means that the Google Stadia thing is gonna be like $85 a month. Freaking A! Why? Why we gotta be doing this? Anyways, 10.7 teraflops is obviously better than uh, the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro by quite some margin. So, looks like the Google Stadia is gonna be the, the, G, the console to have. That's what I'm saying. But uh, in case you're interested in like physical consoles, because the Stadia is not gonna have a physical console, it's just gonna be through things like Chrome, the Chromecast and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, the Xbox One S Discless Edition, a discless edition is anticipated to launch on May 7th. So in case you're looking for a cheaper alternative to play video games at home, Xbox One S coming right out to you soon. And then let's talk about Epic Games. They showed off some stuff at GDC, such as new ray tracing stuff. They've got a new physics destruction system called chaos where you blow things up and it makes it look nice nice and then things uh, game developers such as quantic dreams who is responsible for the games such as heavy rain and Detroit becoming human they've announced that they're gonna become epic game store exclusives and then other games such as the outer worlds even though they advertised that they were gonna be on Steam they pulled the Metro Exodus and they're gonna be an epic game store exclusive for one year so bully on them and then oculus unveiled the new rift s headset for 
$100 developed in partnership with Lenovo. I'm actually super excited for this. It has a 2560 by 1440 resolution, which is 40% more pixels, and it's gonna have a whole bunch of new stuff, such as the inside out tracking capabilities and five cameras to go alongside that with redesigned controllers and hopefully freaking it's gonna use the virtual link connector which is on all of the new nvidia graphics cards and has been sitting useless for quite some time so hopefully oculus who co-developed the standard for the usb-c thing will actually freaking use it and then let's talk about apple updating stuff uh they actually just kind of silently pushed out an update for the imac the freaking uh, iPad mini, which now has pencil support, and then the AirPods, which has the H1 chip instead of the W1 chip, and it's supposed to have better playback time, supposed to have better Bluetooth connectivity with Gen 5 as opposed to Gen 4.2, and it looks like the pricing is also gonna be really good. The new case is actually gonna support wireless charging, so if you at all care about Apple stuff, some silent updates coming out from them. And then other updates, Steam has updated the library. They're still gonna give you the column on the left that displays all your games, but that middle section is gonna be offensive to your eyes with tons of data and information about video games that you love. And then Samsung's announced an update to HBM. It's gonna be called HBM 2E. We talked about this in the hot news months ago about how that was being in development. Anyways, hopefully AMD doesn't use this and make our graphics cards even more expensive. And then Cyber, Cyber Red, CD Projekt Red has announced that yes, they are still planning on releasing two AAA games by 2021. The first being Cyberpunk 2077, but then the second one coming out at some point in the near future with them not ready to disclose what it is. If it's not The Witcher, Siri, I don't know what it is. Hopefully, it, I mean, I'm okay with the new IP from them as well. Hope I'm okay. I'm happy with all of this. And then in the worst little bit of news of the day, Facebook got caught with the storing over 600 million passwords in plain text. How the heck did this happen? That is insane. So there's a uh, report coming out from a cybersecurity company discussing the fact that there are 600, up to 600 million passwords in plain text and uh, something uh, like 20,000 Facebook employees had access to seeing these passwords and they revealed that over 2,000 engineers accessed the data that could have the plain text passwords in 9 million different queries. What the frick? Facebook fixed this. In case you guys haven't realized, Facebook might not be your friend. You should go back to MySpace, especially now that they've deleted your data. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up hot news there. Let me know what you think of the new Intel GPU stuff, the new AMD stuff, the NVIDIA fact that you guys are spending more on GPUs than you probably should be, and you're complicit in their gigantic price hikes because you're adopting them faster than Pascal, so you're showing them, hey, as long as you keep raising the price, people will continue to buy them. Good job, everybody. We're on the same team. Don't forget that if you could, go check out Only Roger's channel to uh, subscribe to him. Hopefully we can get the push for him to go over a million subscribers. Get him that gold play button. He deserves it, definitely. Inspired me so many times. Mooncake, true kitty. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. This is an actual kitchen. That light turns on. Oh, that could have been, oh, that would have made it look a little bit nicer. Dang it. Anyways, I'm only here for a couple more days and then I'm off back to Pretoria. Sad, sad Pretoria. Cape Town's so beautiful. Bye.